Our next speaker is uh, uh, Myungya Han uh, from the uh, University of Illinois at Urbana Champagne. And her presentation is about linked open data in practice. So, Emblematica Online. All right. So, thank you, <clears throat> thank you so much for programming committee for having me here today. Uh, Emblematica Online has been supporting humanities scholars for their teaching and research for last 25, 20, 25 years. And the most of the services that are available in the Emblematica Online is possible because of the metadata that we are using for describing emblem resources. So my colleagues in Germany and in the States are very excited to share our project and our experimentation on linked data today with you. So my talk today is in four parts. First, introducing background, what are emblems and emblem, emblematic online, and the descriptive metadata that is used in the emblematic online called the spine. So what is a spine and how, it, how do we use it? And the linked data in emblematic online. How we publish emblem data as HTML and IDFA, and how we use linked data sources to enhance user experience. And lastly, uh, lessons learned from our experimentation. So first, what is an emblem? Do you know what emblem is about? The early modern emblem is flourished in Europe as a popular genre, literary genre from 1531 until about 1750. And it is for, its form is compound a combination of text and images. So, so sometimes one emblem is just one page long, but sometimes an uh, emblem can be spanned into 20 to 50 pages because of the textual content is that long associated with the images. And the emblem book is called emblem book because it is a collection of emblems. And it is a very highly, uh, emblem is very highly contextual, influenced by contemporaneous events such as Reformation and the Thirty Years' War. And emblem creators drew their inspirations from such diverse uh, sources. This is not me. <laughs> Example, the Bible, fables, mythology, science, and medicine. And as you can see from these images, so all those uh, images come from so many different sources. And uh, as object of research, emblems straddle multiple scholarly domains, such as uh, art and cultural history, literature, semiotics, religious studies, and political science. We can only guess what kind of emblems could be created after that election. But that is everyone's guess. So what is Emblematica Online? Emblematica Online is a portal for a key genre of Renaissance text and images, which is emblems. And this is actually studied in 1990s in University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. We studied digitizing emblem books in our collection, started with four books, then 10 books, and then 19 books. And then in 2002, we joined the forces with uh, the Herzog August Bibliothèque in Ulfenbrittel, Germany. So we tried to find ways to digitize each uh, library's emblem collections and to show, uh, share those collections together. And in 2000, in 2000, we got the grant from the AFK and the NEAH, NEAH to digitize in mass, massive level, uh, le manner. And then in 2013, University of Illinois got another grant from NEAH and shaped our Emblematica Online in current form. And now it provides access to digitized emblem resources from six different institutions around the world, including Getty Museum and uh, Glasgow University, Utrecht University, and so on. So now we have more than uh, 1,400 digitized emblem books and 28,000 emblems included in a portion of those books. And we provide granular levels of access to digitized emblem resources by employing the metadata standard called SPINE. And what is the SPINE then? From the early on, the emblematic community knew that we need a new metadata standard to describe emblem books and emblem resources together. So in 2004, 
Stephen Rawls published a spine of information headings for emblem-related electronic resources that provides descriptive metadata structure that allows describing emblem books and emblems included in the book together in one record. And in 2007, as libraries moved to a library metadata moved toward XML environment, Thomas Stecker developed a X, uh, spine XML schema. And that became a metadata standard for the emblem community uh, that is used for description and dissemination of digitized emblem resources at a granular level. This is the reason why we can get the emblem books and emblem metadata from six different institutions. So then what kind of that granular level entails? What does that mean? So spine works as a container of different levels of descriptions. For example, we can add a book level description, which is traditionally added in mark format. We can add those book level bibliographic metadata in spine in either MAS or TI header. And also we can add copy specific description about the digitized book information in spine as well. And then lastly, we can add emblem specific descriptions in spine. And the emblem level description include the title of the emblem called Mato and the URL of the emblem spread 50, uh, 50 pages long or whatever, uh, so on. And uh, all those transcriptions and subsequent uh, subscriptions for the textual materials uh, information. And finally, uh, the, uh, the image information and the icon class headings that describes emblems and images included in the emblem. And because we have these granular levels of metadata, we can provide uh, multiple granularities for discovery, access, and citation services in Emblematica Online to meet scholarly needs and expectations. By uh, using bibliographic metadata, we can provide book level discovery and access service. And by using transcriptions and MATO, we can provide emblem level discovery and access service. And then by using imaginary topoi themes and motifs, we provide a pictorial level display and access service. And in addition to do that, we allow scholars to choose arbitrary segments of the images and we provide URLs for that selection of the image so scholars can use those URLs for their publication. And now we all want to work with some kind of uh, linked data things and Emblematica is not uh, different. So we would like to approach uh, um, uh, linked data in two different aspects. First, as a producer, we'd like to make digitized emblems resources discoverable on the web. They don't need to come to Emblematica Online. Emblem resources should be discoverable on the web. And as a producer, we would like to provide related web resources that are out there somewhere to bring into Emblem, uh, Emblematica Online portal so users can see other contextual information from our site instead of going out and search by themselves again. And we have a little bit different approaches for publishing uh, emblem metadata, emblem data to linked data. We, uh, 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 but first, we have uh, two considerations, the identifier and vocabulary. We want something that provides persistent, resolvable URIs at each level of granularity and the different entities, for example, name and subject and et cetera. And we want to have something that have a multilingual uh, vocabulary for describing themes and motifs of the emblem images and the text. And then we have these two things in mind. We, are, we, we, thought we decided to use PIF and icon class as an object of our emblem data. And when publishing spine metadata to uh, linked data, we have a very uh, unique approach, which is RDF, uh, HTML and RDFA by using schema.org semantics. So why schema.org semantics? I think everyone already know, because it is used as an encoding standard by web search engines, Google, Yahoo, being all use schema.org uh, schema semantics for their, uh, their resources. And it is really easy for us to represent emblem resources in the web using RDFA. So for example, 
the pictorial level metadata looks like this in uh, spine metadata. And then we transform this into HTML and RDF page. So uh, Pictura is a type of emblem, and emblem is a new uh, schema of semantics that we are going to uh, propose. And then icon, oh, I'm sorry. Icon class is uh, sub, uh, represented as a, a schema oak concept code, and it has sub properties such as coding system, name, same as, and coding values. As you can see, not every spine metadata element has matching schema oak semantics. So, in the, because, there are, because emblem is such a unique resources. But instead of creating the new ontology that only works for emblems, we try to walk away as schema.org uh, community recommends. We try, uh, we create an emblem extensions for emblem specific uh, elements. So, this is what we have been working on it. We almost, uh, we created this one for two years ago, but has been delaying the publishing this emblem extension. So we hope that after we publish this, uh, uh, the emblem extension for schema.org, then uh, other emblem, uh, emblem uh, users can publish their data by using schema.org extension. So how, then how Google uh, understand our uh, HTML page with RDFA in, uh, embedded it? For if you look at the name, name has a type, a role and type and ID included in our HTML page. And then Google grabs the, uh, the, all those information as we hoped. So they grab the name with roles and type that is a person. And if there is a, a VIF link, then they grab those IDs. And we really hope that this will allow uh, our emblematical uh, resources discoverable and usable with more people in the, in the web. And as a consumer of the, meta, uh, the linked open data, we try to use BIF web services because it provides additional information about the name, including nationality, gender, and others. And it connected to other resources, including <coughs> World Get Identities and Wikipedia, <coughs> excuse me, that provide a lot of contextual information as first presenters uh, talk about. <coughs> so, in order to do this kind of, uh, in order to uh, uh, exploit uh, BIF web services, we did the metadata reconciliation uh, work for all the names appeared in the spine metadata first. So, if the name has the BIF matching BIF link, we store those link on our local server, not the string values, those personal names. And all, other, all additional services are dynamically performed just to go out to BIF and so on. So this is a book level page, a book level, dis a book level display, a display page in Emblematica Online. So if the name appeared in the spine metadata, usually a creator or a printer or in uh, somebody who create those uh, met uh, emblems, if the name has the matching VIAF link, we add those little box with more info. And if users wants to find out more info and clicks that button, then our system a script goes out via F and then grab this information and uh, display to users. And you can see that there are two uh, national libraries, authority data link, as well as VIF and WorldCat and no Wikipedia. Well, sometimes if it's a Wikipedia entry, you can have a Wikipedia, the ent a Wikipedia entry in here as well. So users doesn't need to go out to the web and search their own for specific national libraries, authority data, or Wikipedia, and so on. And for the icon class headings, it is the controlled vocabularies for describing iconographic images and used for emblem community widely. And it is developed and maintained by the company called Archives in Netherlands. And this is the same. We, we only keep the icon class notation in our own server and provide the services. And icon class web service provides multilingual service and it supports hierarchical browsing service as well. So this is the example of their web service for one of the icon class heading available in uh, their uh, server. You can see that icon class is available in two different forms. One is called notation in numeric form 
the other one is called preferred label in string format in four different languages. So we can actually use this for the uh, multilingual services in, for our users. It also have narrower and broader terms available in their web service. So we can use this for uh, icon class browsing service. This is an example of emblem level display page in Emblem Article 9. Every emblem page displays the title of the emblem on top and then emblem dis uh, images and icon class that describes that emblems and text. And those are actually assigned by special uh, scholars who really understand the emblems and the, also, uh, the history of uh, emblems and, and so on. And from emblem level display page, user can, users can select their browsing option languages from here. Those are four languages available in icon class heading web service. And then when you choose those languages, all the display of icon class headings are automatically changed into, changed into the language of user's choice. And for each icon class heading, if you click it, then four options appears for additional service. So users can find more emblems with the same icon class headings in the Emblematica Online, or find images in other sites such as Festival Culture and uh, a Virtual Print Room, or browse icon class headings in uh, different uh, narrow or broader terms. So if user can, if user, user choose browsing icon class headings, then the new window pops up and shows all related terms of that specific icon class headings. And from here, users can also, again, change languages and uh, have four other uh, services. So this is an emblem site, but you can also find images from available in other web pages, such as virtual print room and uh, festival culture. So if you user can click those one of those two sites, then they can find images from other available uh, web collections right away, because we can, we know that how the other web uh, web uh, collections create they uh, work with their URLs for search uh, algorithms, and this is not exactly a linked data, but it shows the power of controlled vocabularies. And I believe that controlled vocabulary is one of the important foundation of linked data. So this is possible because virtual print room and festival culture uh, collections are also using icon class as uh, their descriptive controlled vocabularies. So what kind of lessons learned from our experimentation? I think it is almost the same as the previous presenter and the last year's Europeana's uh, the, the presentation about reclamation, reclamation work. Metadata quality really matters. If your metadata is using, uh, is, if your metadata use controlled vocabularies and created consistent manner, then Publishing your metadata to linked data or design a new services by exploit, exploiting linked data services can be easier if than not. And automatic metadata reconciliation work requires human intervention. And we have to really improve those uh, matching algorithms uh, regularly. And you have to run those, uh, the recon uh, reconciliation program regularly. And you have to also check the manually, the spot check, whether the, uh, the link is real, the matching is really right or not. And then not all linked data services, especially authority data, are not the same. Some authority data has a really rich contextual information, but some authority data has just the names or place names, sometimes with the wrong spellings. And the not all linked data services is not open. They are, some are closed, and some are partially open, and they have a, such a limited service as well. So you really need to know what kind of linked data you are going to work with to provide additional services to your users. And I have to say that Emblematica Online is a really unique uh, case study, a case case for how one specific metadata standard is developed, used, and supported in a community, emblem community. And I think uh, the linked data and the semantic web is exactly the same. It really requires community effort that we have to together, we have to identify and uh, identify needs and areas of work, areas of work and try to develop the new workflows together. 
Thank you so much. And please visit us at Emblematica online and let us know what kind of things that we can do better and more. Thank you. Questions? So, who will start? All right, let's, uh, okay. Um, first of all, thank you. Um, I'm just curious because this is always a, a question of, of disputes in the community, so your experience. Um, the same schema.org data can be expressed three different ways. Yes. Right? RDFA, JSON, LD, microdata. Yes. If you like, from a semantic web point of view, they are identical. Have you experimented with the others, and have you chosen RDFA for very specific reasons, or you just took whatever worked? Well, we chose RDFA because it is quick and easy, I have to say. So we actually, the, our web page uh, have a two different uh, approach. So those RDFA embedded attributes can be represented as a JSON LD as well, JSON, uh, JSON as well. So it is not about the XML. So the main reason that we are trying to with RDFA is just it is quick and easy to make our metadata available on the web. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next. Hello, my name is Daniel Santi from Library of Representative of Indonesia. I want to know how to identify of data to make sure there is between one emblem to the other emblem. And then, uh, why do you choose the period uh, for uh, the emblem this. Thank you. Do you do you? Oh, okay. How how to identification authority data to make sure that there is link data between one emblem and the other emblem. Yeah, okay. together, yeah. So we use icon class headings as a controlled vocabulary that describes uh, emblems. And usually one emblem has more than, uh, sometimes it has one icon class headings, but it has emblem and it has more than 10 uh, icon yeah. class headings. And emblem cannot mean so many different things. So if, uh, if we try just to try to match with emblems with same icon class headings. So they cannot be exactly the same emblems, but they have the same representation mm -hmm. of images or motifs. Mm -hmm. So if you find the trees, mm -hmm. then you have a really a lot of emblems from our site. Right. But that actually means very different things, that each emblem means different things. The only connection is the tree is appeared in the each emblem. Thank you. Yes. Okay, and <clears throat> let me ask, now it's great that your data is available as uh, linked data. Uh, what's next? What uses of this data do you envisage? What applications do you want people to build? Uh, well, we have been thinking about putting uh, our data in RDF and trying to build RDF, RDF store since three years ago. And we identify the right the uh, triple store and the way to transform, transform all RDF data, RDFA data to RDF, RDF. But we haven't done that work yet. So uh, at this point, I, for now, we can just provide access and discovery. But we hope that sometime uh, in, the, in the future, scholars can come to our site and build their own collections with the same elements of their uh, emblems with their choice. So they can publish those collections for, for their own purpose. But that is still in the future and in plan. And you can't know all the uses, how people will use your data. Mobile yes. applications yeah. as well, yeah, perhaps. I hope so. 
All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.